Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made this artwork of Bay from Hollow Life. So, this particular artwork was definitely a lot more, um, suggestive, I would say. It's, I am definitely drew her more presenting than I usually do. Um, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I, I do a lot of more risque artwork. Um, but this one was kind of tricky because I had kind of an idea in mind, but not sure how to execute. Um, I, I found a reference on Pinterest that I really liked, but I didn't like certain parts of it. I thought the hands were weird. And you'll notice uh, that actually affected how I did the hands in this artwork because the, the hand ended up being incorrect and I fixed it later in post. I actually had a few friends uh, give me some ideas on what I was doing wrong in the artwork, which is always good. Um, don't, n don't, ignore people when they tell you that something looks weird or is off even if you don't see it if they see it it's not always a lack of a uh, of vision or ideas or an artistic integrity that makes them see things even people who aren't artists can have they have eyes you know what i mean so that means that just because you don't see it and you're kind of tunnel visioned in into what you see as an artist it does not mean that they are incorrect it is super important to take all criticism, even if it hurts. Um, with this particular artwork, I, I messed up a few things. Uh, for for example, the uh, sketch, the head was too tall and the hair was a bit out of control. And uh, not to mention, the first way I drew eyes, while the eye was a little bit off, especially the left eye, it needed to be extended a bit, if that makes any sense. But... I'm really proud with how this turned out regardless. I do think um, I do think it was a good idea um, color-wise to go for more of a darker, very warm, vibrant piece. It's almost very comfy, if that's a good way to put it. Um, I did forget to show me doing the background, and that's actually because I used a photo from Unsplash. Um, it's, a, it's just a quick way to get a quick background if you if your goal is to blur the background and not have it be prominent unsplash is great you just have to change the settings and the level correction to make it fit more of an anime style but there's absolutely no shame in using photos as long as they're royalty free and you're not stealing or you're changing the purpose so my goal when i use unsplash photos is to make a quick background and kind of get it going Sometimes I even end up redrawing the background entirely because even though it's like, okay, it's not really what I'm looking for. This was a case where it, it fit the lighting and the theme of the character. So it was just like, yes, I, I get to be lazy. <laughs> and sometimes that's okay. Um, not everyone will agree and that's okay. You're allowed to not agree. You may think it's weird that I do that, but it's sometimes time savers are great. Um, we're doing light carving now. So we're planning out the lighting for the artwork. Um, and I went through a few iterations of the lighting. Uh, the first iteration I had here, uh, it just wasn't that great. It it was too on the nose, I would say. Um, the, the light coming from directly atop the character, but then I had it lit in places where it really shouldn't be. Um, and yeah, I ended up having to change it. So you don't have to go with the first pass that you do, but it is recommended to uh, play with the lighting a bit. And... There, there's a big cut because I forgot to uh, record me fixing the sketch. So we're definitely getting to the point where we're ending it here pretty soon and we're going to be doing line art. So yay. Um, back to the topic of criticism. I understand how hard it is for newer artists to take critiques because most people aren't built for having the thing they put so much work into be harshly criticized or even lightly criticized like the the human brain hates criticism but as an artist i really 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 encourage you to accept critique it's majorly important in my personal opinion um it took me years to get to the point where i could take criticism and still to this day when somebody critiques my work it hurts it the feeling will never go away it's just crazy. Oh, wow. I didn't expect the cut to be so big in line art. I could have sworn I did. I didn't 
cut it like that. My mistake. Um, but yeah, here's here's the line art, I guess. But um, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm really am shocked that there was that big a cut. Huh. That that actually makes me pause a bit. But anyway, um, the with the line art in general, you can kind of see the motion I have going on. Um, especially with her kind of cupping the breast of it. Um, it, it was definitely a whole lot of fun. I got to try more squish. Um, I really enjoy drawing squish. Um, it can be overdone. It can be underdone. Um, so finding the right balance is really, really important. Um, if you'll notice my lines are very thin, I, I believe in using thin lines because I want the rendering to stand out more than the line art. Even though I put a lot of work into the line art, I don't want that to be the focus, if that makes sense. So you'll notice that I've shortened the head a bit and I've created kind of a downward turn on the head, like almost as she's slightly looking down and looking up at you. So yeah, it's definitely a, a whole lot of fun. I'm, I'm super proud of this artwork. It's honestly one of my better ones. Um, I actually had someone to say to me, is this AI? And that hurt my soul. But um, in, a, in a weird way, AI does a lot of things correct, but it doesn't know what it's doing, if that makes sense. So when somebody accuses or, or suggests that it could be AI, you can take it to one of two ways. You can be completely insulted that somebody thinks that, or you can take it kind of the way I do and say, okay, the rendering impresses them because if, if they think the rendering is AI, I must be doing something right because AI's rendering is really cool. It's just the anatomy and the um, lighting that's a bit rough in AI artwork. So it can be taken both as a compliment and an insult. And I personally choose to take it as a compliment. There are times where, like, whenever they say that, it makes me go, No, it's not AI. I worked very hard on it. But it's okay. Um, we live in a new world now where AI is a thing and things like that are going to happen. And as artists, we, we have to now accept that that is a part of life. Um, for better or for worse. So now you'll see I added the uh, background back to it and we kind of have a plan to go in. Um, whenever I do the rendering, my goal is to make the rendering feel like it fits the background. Um, so I kind of, whenever I draw the breasts, I kind of make them shaped uh, a bit rounder. Think of shapes like spheres and um, with a bit of uh, movement to them. Um, my goal when I go in and I make the shapes look round is that's the point. It's supposed to be like direct light. Then I put a multiply layer on top of it to make the harder lights appear. So that's definitely a whole lot of fun. Um, I feel like I'm I'm starting to overcomplicate faces again, so I need to be very careful about that because that could cause my stuff to look a bit busy later down the line. And I don't want that. I tried busy and busy may impress some people, but to me, it just looks cluttered and gross. You can, you can actually see with all the adjusting I'm doing to layers, I don't know what I want to do in terms of brightness and saturation and hue. So I'm just playing with everything till it looks correct to me. Um, I shouldn't have worried about that too much because whenever I do post-processing and tonal curves and color balance, it tends to end up fixing it later. So I probably didn't need to go in and like go crazy with it. Also, hair rendering. It's best to go simple. Um, you'll notice that I actually put the, the lines in the hair in the wrong place. So I had to like go back in and fix it, use a multiply layer on the edges to create the terminal um, in the lighting. Uh, it's called the Terminator line, and it's really, really important whenever you want your stuff to look correct. Um, the Terminator line is right where the light hits the shadow. The shadow right where before it touches the light gets a little bit darker. So I would recommend um, looking up Terminator line if you want to learn how to render correctly. So, yeah, that's, that's actually something that might help you out a whole lot. Just Google Terminator line in rendering and learn something awesome. You'll notice that I also was very went very simple on the um on the shirt and I found that that gives me better results. It's it's incredible how just 
being more simple with your rendering yields better results and everything. I also made the skin a little bit darker to kind of match the uh, the the brightness of the um, hair. I want everything to feel like it makes sense. I even drew like the little rat almost like it's like being bent by the shirt. It was a whole lot of fun. I, I definitely had a whole lot of fun here. We are now hitting the point where I'm doing the eyes and we're going to start going into some post-processing, which is my favorite part because that's what brings the artwork to life. It already looks complete, but after post-processing, it just works absolute wonders on your artwork. Adding the add glow layer, getting everything to sparkle nicely, adding some, you know, hue and saturation to kind of find where the character isn't separated from the background and add some separation. Now we're adding in the hard light layer to make it all glow and a tonal curve to kind of get the balance correctly, some level correction so it's not too dark in places. Too much contrast actually isn't a good thing, believe it or not. And here we are, the finished artwork. If you enjoyed this artwork, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, helps out a whole lot, and I will see you next time. Bye!